we had a, a, had a student. She has now been able to go on her own and do her own things in what she wants to do. But when she registered with the school, her uh, mother is a diplomat with the Montenegrin embassy mm. in Beijing. Mm. So when she was posted to Beijing, she and her daughter went. And when they arrived at the airport, the daughter tested positive for COVID. Mm. So she was immediately separated from her mom, 13 years old. Wow. Taken to the hospital for the first 10 days. Then moved to a hotel for 35 days Mm. away from her mom, only digital contact. Mm. And because of this experience, she have has PTSD, Mm -hmm. you know, being removed from her mom. And, and so then her mom is living in the um, residences in the Beijing UN community, like where all the embassies are, mm, okay, and she's true. in the Montenegrin embassy with her daughter, who now the schools in the local area have said, we're all full. We don't mm. have any room for her. So here's this 13-year-old child, basically stuck. It's not like she can yeah. even go for a walk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, she's living in the embassy. She can't go outside unless she has security. Wow. She can't, you know. So she started with us. And so I would meet with her every day. Now we're talking 12 hours difference right, in right. time. <laughs> so at nine o'clock at night, I'm going on and meeting with her at nine o'clock in the morning hmm. or vice versa, whichever right, right. she chose. And we would just have conversations Mm -hmm. so that she had some connection. She, and she was interested in doing, so we created a a curriculum for all of her interests Mm, to keep her, but, but across the board, like everything she, she did her physical exercises. She did reading geography. She was especially interested in, in, in theater. Mm. So, That was a challenge because her primary interest was theater. So we're talking about Shakespeare. We're talking about plays. We're watching plays together. We're discussing all uh, how to budget for a a show Mm. to go on Mm -hmm. stage. So just all the different elements because she was basically a prisoner in her own home. Yeah. Yeah. And, and after a year of doing that, she has now been able to overcome a lot of her PTSD because she's had the support through all the interests that she has Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. gained confidence to know she's now 14, almost 15. Mm. And so even just that little bit of contact once a day Mm -hmm. to check in, to make sure she's okay to find out what she's interested in, to support what she's interested in, to be able to allow her to use that as a, as a platform to get herself independently learning. She started doing university courses online Mm. as well to keep herself occupied (laughs) and, uh, (laughs) and interested. And she read lots of books. So she is a definite success story that I can see because that without that freedom, Mm -hmm. she would have had a very difficult time. Yeah, yeah, very good. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.